Initially going into this, uh, this study was that loneliness is a major risk factor for, for health problems and, and death in older adults. In fact, if you compare uh, loneliness as a risk factor to other things like smoking or even um, self-reported health status, um, you see that loneliness is a comparable risk factor um, in terms of predicting health problems and, and death uh, compared to these other very well-known health factors. So of course we always tell people to you know, quit smoking, but rarely do we think about loneliness in sort of the same, in the same way. As loneliness is really about this experience of, of feeling uh, socially disconnected. And that's critical. It doesn't seem to be about actually being dis, uh, disconnected in the sense of having very few social contacts, but really this feeling of distress that accompanies not, you know, feeling like you 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 feel like you have a kind of a group of, or a community of people that you're close to. And uh, and meditation training has been shown to uh, be quite effective in in reducing distress um, and helping people kind of work with difficult feelings. And so we thought maybe meditation training could be effective in, in reducing the, the distress that's associated with loneliness. And there's been a couple of studies that have tried to reduce loneliness in older adults. Um, you know, these are studies that randomly assign people to different types of programs they think can, can um, help people reduce their loneliness. And one approach has been, hey, let's take older adults and let's bring them in and to these community centers and let's have them you know, form uh, you know, new relationships and maybe that would be a way to reduce their loneliness. In fact, these types of social networking interventions really uh, don't seem to be very effective in reducing loneliness. So what we did was we brought people in, uh, we randomly assigned them to either this eight-week mindfulness meditation program, which I'll tell you about in a moment, um, or we, uh, we had them basically get usual care so they didn't get any type of, uh, of, of program. And in this eight-week program, this mindfulness meditation training program, they came in, they met um, in a group setting uh, once a week for about two hours. And uh, they worked with a meditation instructor who taught them these mindfulness meditation techniques. And then they practiced at home. And we asked for them to practice about 30 minutes a day. Um, and finally, uh, the, the third component of this program is that they came in for a day-long retreat uh, in the sixth or seventh week of the, the eight-week program. So it sort of integrated all these different you know, activities they learned over the eight weeks. And the practices that they learned in the class consisted of uh, mindfully attending to their body, so noticing body sensations. We have them do a body scan practice where they sort of start at the tips of their toes and work all the way up their body. Just sort of noticing, paying attention to body sensations without trying to change them or evaluate those sensations as they're arising. So a lot of this practice really starts with body awareness. Um, and so we have them work with their body, we have them work with their breathing. Um, we then make it a little bit more dynamic and we have them um, uh, you know, work on doing some sort of very slow stretching activities and bring mindful awareness to that. And then later in the course we start to build in how they're responding to their emotional experiences, how they're responding to daily life experiences, how they're responding to stressors in their life. And uh, so you really start with kind of building a body awareness and then working your way up into um, mindfully attending to emotions and, uh, and kind of you know, mindfulness in daily life practices. We had them come in for an assessment session before the program and then immediately after this eight week program. Um, and we, we took blood samples and we also administered this um, measure of loneliness in the study. And what we found was that, at least this uh, initial study, that this eight weeks of mindfulness meditation training decreased loneliness from before to after the program. And that seemed to be only the case in the participants who got the eight week meditation program. One other thing that's really interesting about this study that I mentioned was that we collected blood samples. And uh, with these blood samples, we could actually look at a couple of things. One is we could look at markers of, uh, of inflammation. Um, so uh, one thing many people probably hear in their doctor's offices is, you know, what their, their C-reactive protein levels are, CRP levels. Um, and the reason why doctors are really interested in this is that it's a very good marker of, of morbidity and mortality in older adults. So if you've got elevated CRP, you're going to be at risk for inflammatory disease and, uh, and, and death. And this is a fairly well-known um, clinical marker. In our study, we saw um, some kind of small indication that we could reduce these CRP levels in our meditation group. But more interestingly, we sort of backtracked and we said, well, what are the genes that are actually regulating this inflammation? And um, 
we could look at, uh, with this blood sample, we could actually look at changes in gene expression in these immune cells that sort of, you know, drive these, uh, these markers of inflammation. And we actually found that, um, uh, first of all, if we just looked in our lonely, uh, if we looked at our baseline group before treatment, we found that the more you are lonely, the more you had these upregulated sort of pro-inflammatory genes turning on. And we found that after this meditation training, you could actually turn down these, uh, these genes that were sort of driving this inflammatory response. So again, some indication there that loneliness is associated with upregulated pro-inflammatory gene expression, and our meditation training could actually sort of turn this down in ways that may you know, have significance, uh, clinical significance, in terms of turning down this, uh, this kind of inflammatory response that makes older adults, uh, lonely older adults, at risk. I, I highly recommend to people who think this may be of interest to find a, a teacher, a mindfulness meditation teacher uh, in the community that can, um, you know, basically provide some structure and guidance for, for learning this. You know, it really is a, a, a training program. You have to sort of train your mind just like you might train your biceps in the gym.